So we see four factors that have sort of driven the, the weakness in the bank share prices. Firstly, it's been sort of concerns around earnings, predominantly around the bad debt cycle in terms of coming off a, a low point of historical bad debts at the, the start of this calendar year and now starting to see some deterioration occurring. You know, our view on the longer term basis is that there will be a, a deterioration. This will be an average cycle rather than a severe cycle and the market is more than pricing in uh, an average cycle of bad debts into, into current share prices. So we, we, we do see some pessimistic opportunity for, for us in long term value there. Uh, capital levels is a second factor. Clearly there will be more capital required by the banking system. We had a, a increase last year around the mortgage risk weights requiring the banks to increase capital. That had, saw them front load that with rights issues effectively. Um, we'd see the next phase which will come on the back of the, the BAL capital regulations which will be put out in consultation towards the end of calendar 16. Uh, there'll be regulatory announcements through the following 12 months in Australia through APRA and then implementation through 2018. So there's a longer runway in terms of how the banks will be able to address the need for higher capital and our view is they'll be able to utilise you know, dividend reinvestment plan participation and organic growth of capital through earnings rather than at this point needing to front load with uh, big rights issues as, as seen in the last 12 months. So we do see it's an issue capital, but a manageable issue um, going forward. Dividend sustainability is the third factor that's been a concern for the banks. You know, our view is that the payout ratios of banks, which is sitting in the sort of 75 to 80 percent range in, in, as a sector, is above where it's probably long term sustainable. But we don't see the dividends per share at substantial risk. We have seen ANZ cut its dividend. There is some risk for for National Australia Bank to reduce its dividend in the cents per share payout. But in an aggregate, we, we view that's a sort of a five to 10% quantum of reduction. It's, it's not the traditional cycle, 20 to 30% at the bottom of a, of a bad debt cycle where at extreme points you can have more meaningful reductions. So the eight to 9% pre-tax yields the banks are offering, we view is a sustainable level and very attractive versus you know, cash interest rates and bond rates at sort of sub 2%, and also against relative Australian equities that are an average of sort of 4.5% um, pre tax yields. So, within the overweight sector position, we have two particular banks where we have the, the large individual stock overweights so that's ANZ Banking Group and Westpac, um, with quite different stories as to really why we're, we're in overweight invested there. In ANZ's case, it really is a turnaround story and in a multi-year period in terms of where we see the upside. Um, very much a turnaround story within their Asia franchise, not exiting the business, but improving it, its performance and a focus on returns rather than revenue, which was certainly a feature in, in, the, in the preceding CEO's tenure. Um, so we see a turnaround performance on the Asia franchise. We see some divestments of assets, including some of their Asia partnership businesses that they, they own. Uh, we see a reduction in some of the underperforming institutional business, which is very low returning at the moment. So there's a recovery of, of earnings and growth and return on equity that we think will be reflected in, in share price appreciation relative to the peer group. In terms of Westpac, Westpac we view very similarly in an operational sense to the Commonwealth Bank. So really it's a, a relative value call between which one of these large domestic retail mortgage plays do we, we think is the, is the best value over the medium term. And currently in terms of the relative attractiveness, there's probably a 10% premium in Commonwealth Bank over Westpac and hence we, we, we're overweight Westpac versus CDA.